In this video, I'm going to be telling you all you need to know about tuning your cars for the Assetto Corsa Toge. So make sure you stay tuned because a good tune is vital to improving your times. This video is sponsored by the legends over at Next Level Racing. Every other tuning guide for Assetto Corsa will usually tell you what effect each setting will have on the car. And then it's just up to you to figure out how to apply each setting to suit your driving style. But in this tuning guide, I want to try something a little bit different. I'm going to list every single issue you will encounter with the default tune of a car and then telling you how to fix it. So to properly use this guide, you should get used to the default tune of a car first. Then if there's something that doesn't suit your driving style, you can come back to this video and find out exactly how to fix it. I'm going to split this tuning guide up into five segments. Braking, turn in, corner exit, miscellaneous and tips. So for example, if you feel as though your car isn't performing well on the exit of corners, you can load up this video and go to the corner exit segment to find out exactly how to fix it. This video was heavily inspired by Chris Hayes tuning guide and I want to condense it into an easy to digest package. So if you somehow haven't heard of Chris's channel, go and check him out. Up first is braking. Under braking, if you experience loss of control, you should either move your brake bias forward, decrease the slow damper. If your front tires lock often, you should move your brake bias backwards. If your car pitches too much, you should stiffen the front springs. If the nose of the car hits the floor, you should increase the ride height, adjust bump stops, stiffen the front springs. If your wheels excessively lock, you should reduce overall brake pressure, but use this with caution. Next is turn in. If you understeer at all speeds, you should adjust front tire pressures, soften front anti-roll bar, Increase front toe out, decrease diff coasting lock, soften the front springs. If you understeer at mid to high speeds, you should reduce rear wing angle or increase the front wing angle if applicable. If you don't have aero, it's driver error. If you understeer when braking, you should move brake bias backwards. If you oversteer at all speeds, you should adjust rear tire pressures, stiffen front anti roll bar. Decrease front toe out, stiffen the front springs. If you oversteer at mid to high speeds, you should increase rear wing angle or decrease front wing angle. Again, if you don't have aero, the issue is in the chair. If you experience lift off oversteer, you should increase diff coast locking. Up next is corner exit. If you understeer on corner exit, you should stiffen rear anti roll bar. Increase diff power locking, stiffen rear springs. If you oversteer at all speeds, you should soften rear anti roll bar, decrease diff power locking, soften rear springs. If you oversteer at mid to high speeds, you should increase rear wing angle or decrease front wing angle. Once again, if you have no aero, the issue is with you. If you have lift off oversteer on a corner exit, the issue is again in the chair, not in the car. Up next is miscellaneous. If your tires overheat all over, you should increase tire pressures, decrease toe value. If your tires overheat on the inside edge, you should reduce negative camber. If your tires overheat on the outer edge, you should increase negative camber. If your tires overheat in the middle, you should reduce tire pressures. If your tires are cold all over, decrease tire pressures and increase toe value. If the car is edgy during weight transfer when braking, accelerating and turning, you should decrease slow damper settings. If the car is edgy during weight transfer over bumps, you should decrease fast damper settings. If your car has a low top speed, you should either reduce wing angles, lengthen gear ratios. If your car bounces during weight transfer when accelerating, braking and turning, you should increase slow damper settings. If your car bounces during weight transfer on bumps and curbs, you should increase fast damper settings. Up next is tips. Ride height. Your ride height should be as low to the ground as possible, but avoid grounding the car or stalling the aero. Dampers. 
bump setting should be lower than the corresponding rebound setting. Try to use the lowest setting that avoids oscillation or bounding. Dampers can be used to tune the responsiveness of the car. High values equals more responsive, low values equal more stable. Aero. Use ride height and rake to generate as much downforce as possible. Then trim the aero balance using the wings or splitter. Increasing the rake moves the aero balance backwards. Run the car as stiff as needed to maintain stable ride height. Brake bias. Front tyres should lock just before the rears for the best stability. So you made it to the end. Hopefully by this point you should have a perfectly tuned car, but if not, don't worry. Getting the perfect tune that suits your driving style is a tedious process that requires a lot of fiddling. If you change one setting, it's likely that something else will be out of whack. Therefore, you should only change one setting at a time, then test it. If it works, keep it. If not, revert the change. If you find it impossible to create the perfect tune, don't worry. People spend hours on this stuff. You can always Google the car you're using and the track with tunes after it to see if anyone else has made tunes for it. This usually works. You can install any tunes you find online by dropping them in documents, Assetto Corsa, setups, then the car and then the track. If you found this video helpful, please feel free to drop a like and let me know what you thought in the comments. If you're new around here, subscribe for more Assetto Corsa Toge tutorials. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.